Oh, hi. I thought I'd do a short tutorial on this, this stair problem that you have. What I tried to do initially was just to get as close as possible. I, I opened the stair object and checked winders, hoping that uh, they would fill in on this side. And with this uh, rounded uh, uh, starter tread, you know, you can see, as I mentioned in the email to you, uh, it curves, when you curve the stair, it curves on both sides, and when you uh, use a starter tread, it starter treads on both sides. There's no way to just do it on one side only. <clears throat> but, you know, if you want it curved, you can just select that part of the stair and then hit the, uh, see here in the edit toolbar, the uh, straight to curve tool. That curved it. But, the winder setting isn't building into the wall like like we might want. I'm going to get rid of this uh, starter tread that's going through the wall. It looks kind of goofy. Let's take a look at that. It's one thing in in, in uh, plan view. It looks one way. <clears throat> and, you know, perhaps that looks better. But you can see that the stairs aren't winding into the wall like. We might like, like to have it. <clears throat> and so there's just limitations in what the stair tool can do. Uh, I'm going to move this wall underneath the stair in just a little bit. I play, press the control key to get that to turn the way I wanted, you know, move where I wanted to. Use, again, I'm using the control key to get it underneath the stair. Let's we'll see what that looks like in a camera view. I don't know. If it, it may have improved it. May have made it made it look worse. That looks all right. <clears throat> but you can see on custom stairs, it's hard to get uh, uh, perfect function functionality. I was thinking about uh, how how I could fix that, and I can, this can be fixed with a little uh, out-of-the-box thinking. One thing, I'm going to take this, uh, I'm going to open the uh, stair dialog and take out on the style tab the stringer at wall. <clears throat> it's nothing wrong with stringer at wall except that it's not putting it over here, so it looks goofy to have it here but not down here. So I'm going to fix this uh, uh, using custom slabs. Uh, this is a little bit beyond what I originally bid for you. Oops, I see your wriggling sticking through the floor. Oh yeah, and you asked me about uh, the width. And see, uh, when I click on it, it shows three foot nine. But uh, you open the dialog and go to the width tab, and that's you know, three foot nine. So it is three foot nine, over and above what temporary dimensions might say. Let me fix that railing. That's <coughs> you turn on the reference display. Uh, okay. Yeah, this uh, this the wall's thicker on the uh, foundation level. Let me see if it's lined up with the one above. Yeah, no, there it is. Okay, now I can move these stairs over. The the wall was out of alignment. That's why the railing was sticking through the wall above. I'll go back and check that camera view. Yeah, okay, that cleaned that up. Now to this. This part, I'm going to just keep this camera open and control tab back and forth to it. <clears throat> what we can do is I'm going to go over here under CAD tools, box tools, regular, regular po rectangular polyline. I'm just going to draw a polyline in here. Yeah, I want that to show. Right now, this is just a two-dimensional object, but I'm going to shape it similar to the stairs. Snap that to there. Now this two-dimensional object, I'm going to convert it, <clears throat> excuse me, using this convert tool. This is the edit toolbar. It pops up every time you select something. And the tool choices in it are germane to what's uh, selected. We'll convert this uh, two-dimensional object to a three-dimensional object, call it a slab. And I want it to be uh, 
six inches off the floor and six point one two five six and an eighth inches thick. And I'm going to go back to the camera view so you can see that. Okay, there it is there. And the default material on, on such created object is concrete. I'm going to change the uh, material on it to uh, whatever that, well, hang on a second. Let me find it, figure out what it is. This is the uh, adjust material. Okay, it's white oak blonde. Okay, I just, I can use this tricolor tool to adjust or change materials, but also find out what materials are. I don't want to use the eyedropper tool. Uh, I could, but I'd rather not. I think it's a more conservative, maybe a couple more clicks. What is that? Uh, white. Yeah, there it is. White oak blonde. So there's the uh, tread. I mean, not the tread, the riser. Oops. When I made that change. Now I'm going to make a copy of this in place, copy and paste in place, <clears throat> and I'm going to use a, a, a command where I'm going to grab a corner. I haven't grabbed it yet. I'm going to press the C key and then left click and drag. And this, with that pressed, it'll make a it'll concentrically resize the object. I know that's kind of advanced, but I'm going to bring this side now that I've got this side sticking out. I don't want this sticking into the wall. So I reshaped it, made a copy. Right now it's just occupying the same space as the original object. Now I'm going to open this dialog box and I'm going to make the elevation top seven inches and make it just uh, an inch thick. Click OK. We'll go back to the camera view and you'll see how this is working out. Okay. And this material for the treads currently, not that this is a material you might want, but it's the material there. It's called medium MP plank. I'm going to take this new slab that I make made and change its material to MP plank. I'm going to hit the M key on my uh, keyboard to go to the M's. I don't see it. Oh, <laughs> that's it. I didn't see it because it's uh, right in front of my face. It looks like uh, I guessed wrong on the height. So I'm going to click on that object and raise it up height-wise to 8 inches. <clears throat> Not worrying about uh, building the house right now. I'm just modeling and, and also uh, looks like it's going to need to be about 8 and a quarter, 8.25. I just wanted to engulf the, the stair tread here that... Uh, Needs to be a little bit higher. Nobody's going to walk up these stairs. They're just virtual stairs. To need a little bit more. I can as long as I can still see the uh, original tread. I, it's not high enough. So we'll go uh, five eighths, eight and five eighths off the floor. Okay, that's kind of where I was going with that. And this, so we went right under it, so it, its thickness would be uh, seven and five eighths, seven and uh, five eighths. And the, in order to, for there not to be a gap underneath it, I need to make it slightly thicker than it is tall. So that'd be uh, make it seven and six eighths. Point seven five. That's the one underneath it. Okay. And this is how I could get this a little closer. I'll send you this file when I'm done. Uh, this kind of editing is kind of advanced. It's not very intuitive, but it is, as you can see, it's kind of workable. Now, if you want to, <clears throat> if you want a, a, I forget the term for it, a turnout here, uh, I could, I could model that curved. Uh, I could make that actually a stint, an extension of this if I wanted to, these objects here. I'll just go ahead and do that. What the heck. <clears throat> I'm going to take this object here and use this curve tool and curve the edge of it. And this doesn't have to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and straighten that out and have it just disappear into the stairs so we get a little bit closer to your act, stair shown in the uh, blueprints you sent me. I'll make that 
overhang a little bit less. That's a little bit closer. Let's go back to the camera view. And I could do the same thing with the underneath so that's supported. I'm going to click there, hit the tab key, curve it, curve that edge of that, pot, that slab that I made. Now this is very rough and so forth, but you can tweak this around if you want it to. Yeah, that looks better. That's closer, and perhaps I should have done that, but I was in, my hair was on fire the other day when I did it, and uh, I didn't know what level of de degree of perfection that you were going to require of me. <clears throat> uh, this is the lady who asked me to model this house from uh, Blueprints. You've probably seen some screenshots of it. Let me show you the rest of it. I did quite a, you know, I got a lot of it done in, in quite, a, quite high detail. See, there's the walkout, ba or the, the basement stairs and so forth. I did a good job. There's a window well. I did uh, make this window well. That was a, those, are, those are made of custom slabs. <clears throat> and uh, these uh, pony walls in here with the columns on it, that was all done custom. These are slabs here. These are not walls. Those are, those are actually, well, those are soffits. I use soffits because soffits automatically, uh, you can add uh, base mold to them. And, and slabs, you can't add base mold. So I, that saved me a little time there. And it looks better. <clears throat> but absolute perfection in, in Home Designer Pro is very difficult to get. You can see the curve here is not curved. It's segmented, and that's that's what the that's what the software is designed to do, and that's what it does. It doesn't do a, a, everything just tiddly boo. We'll go upstairs. Here's that curved railing. Here, let me use a different camera type. Go up here and use a dollhouse camera. Yeah, there's a curved railing in the in the second floor. So a lot of the, you know a lot of this stuff was done. Um, <clears throat> I bet that these artifacts right here are probably attic walls. Let me make make sure that attic walls attic are turn is turned off. Let me see what that is. Use a material adjustment tool and see what materials on its color bone. The heck is that? Okay, it looks like uh, oh, it's a roof plane. Okay, we turn roof planes all the way off. They should be off in a dollhouse camera view, but there's some artifacts left over for some reason. Roofs. Turn off all the roof la layers, and then how to fix that. See if that doesn't make it go away. No. <laughs> Blast. Let's see, roof planes. Did I miss something? Oh, yeah, ridge caps, overhang area, openings, roofs trim. <clears throat> and this this is the layer set for cam for this type of camera view. It's not the same layer set as in plan view. You can turn things on and off in plan, and you can also independently turn off, on and off things uh, in camera view. Well, that's it's being naughty and staying there, even though I don't want it. I'm going to use this uh, delete surface tool. And I very carefully select that stuff. And I, I'm not deleting it per se. I'm just deleting it out of this camera view. Like if you wanted to send somebody an image, you can clean up the appearance. There's a little sliver I missed. That's, these little things here are called 3D faces. And that's how computers and software define, apparently, three-dimensional objects with, with faces or, or surfaces of the object. And they can be temporarily removed. Even though I turned off all the layers, they were still there. I don't see that happen very often, but when it does, that's something you can do about it. <clears throat> you can see the, the master bedroom I did with soffits. That was very simple and straightforward. The step ceiling in there. So, you got, yeah, it's right in here. <clears throat> the layer set for this camera that I'm using, I was using an overview ca uh, camera before, and that has its own layer set. And uh, while well, in this camera it has its own sets of layers that can be turned on and off so it's a little bit confusing for new users but it's, it's really not that complicated 
once you understand how they they program the software to work, how how it how you know having a brain fart, but uh, you get the idea. <clears throat> I don't want to put a camera there. I want to look at the kitchen. The kitchen, there, there in the blueprints, there wasn't much in the way of detail, so I just kind of generic it in. There was a, a countertop, which is actually a little bit <laughs> too long to be unsupported like that, but that's what the plan showed, and it didn't show any uh, anything in there for core bells or a supporting wall. So I left that sort of thing to you. Anyway, I hope this uh, helps you out on the stairs, uh, and I, I will send you this plan, and it is a little bit closer to, I'm sure, what you intend, but uh, <clears throat> the little curve thing on the end, you could probably download that at uh, 3D Warehouse and put it on there, but if you wanted a true curved railing and so forth, you'd have to make it in SketchUp and, and, and put it there, uh, and Pro doesn't offer you a lot of choices as to the, changing these balusters and things like that, whereas Cheap Architect Premier does. I don't think, no, there's, see, there's not even a Newells and Ballisters tab in the stair specification, so you're just kind of stuck with that, unless you want to painstakingly make this, make that sort of thing in, in a modeling program like SketchUp and then import it. Um, it just depends, if you if you want close to perfection, then you need to go ahead and upgrade to uh, Chief Architect Premier, because that gives you a, a lot greater tool choices and, and so forth to do more exactly what you would like to do, like change the baluster and rail types and and put a, uh, uh, rail caps on the on the stairs and that sort of thing. You just can't do it in Pro. Pro does what it does very well, but uh, you only get $500 worth. You don't get $2,500 worth like you do in the cheap premiere. Okay, well, I'm going to send you this file, and I'm going to share this video with you and, and anybody else who's interested, <clears throat> and I hope it helps you and uh, anyone else who watches it. Thank you.